annoyed if your parents tell you what they want you to do? I do when they call you and harass you. Yeah, I definitely get annoyed. I do get annoyed. Sometimes. Like my mom like tells me like how to do a certain thing or like what to wear sometimes. It just depends. I mean um parents should have control on you like on certain things, like they tell you what to do is right and wrong, but like some things, you know, it's you gotta learn for yourself and make your own decisions. Yes, yeah, because I don't want to do what they want me to do. I just want to do what I want to do. They want me to do stuff that I don't want to do and I like to do things that I like to do. Normally the things they tell me to do are fairly fairly reasonable. I don't have a problem with it. I guess like any normal person I do, but after like I understand and respect them for what they say most of the time. Would you say in general that you honor and you respect your parents? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah. Yes, I would. I do honor and respect my parents. I would say that in general I respect and honor my parents. Yeah, I definitely respect my parents above everyone. It's everything that I know and uh, everything that you know they taught me. It's very valuable and I respect my parents a lot. I listen to what they tell me to do. They raise me and I respect everything they do and I try to model after them. Sometimes my mom fight because we're like the only two ones in the house and we fight like sisters but I always honor and respect my parents. I talk back to them a lot. Most of the time I listen to them and stuff but then a lot of the time I don't really like to listen. I definitely know that feeling and I mean I guess it's weird but the, I guess the way I see it now is that I have three more weeks with my parental units and then I'm off to college so. <laughs> well good for you but like what are parental units? Robots? Well no I mean my parents are great people but I mean sometimes they just make things so much diff more difficult than they need to be. For example we we're picking out a refrigerator last weekend for college yeah. and it's you know they're both the exact same refrigerator but one's cheaper so you go oh no I'll take this one no no but this one has this okay so we'll get that one no but this one's cheaper so I mean it's just like <laughs> yeah. make a decision but I mean they're great people and you know I wouldn't be where I am without them so. <laughs> I see what you're saying I mean it's not always clear to me what my parents are thinking either mm -hmm. like I'll ask them to go someplace and they'll say no and I'm like well I have all these hours free and I have a ride, like why can't I go? Right. But sometimes it's just like, all right, whatever. All right. There's always home. a method to their madness, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it can be easy to think we don't need our parents' help and guidance in our lives. It can also be easy to forget that God gave them to us. So we have people to protect us, teach us, and care for us. And that he asks us to honor them and listen to them. Our parents might not be the coolest people in town or up on the latest trends. But whether we like it or not, they are the ones who have the experience and the responsibility to guide our lives while we are children and teenagers. Honoring thy parental units. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Elias. And I'm Kristen. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Most of the teens on the street expressed how they honored and respected their parents. Although at times they could easily get annoyed with their parents when they tell them what to do. We'll talk with them a little later in the show as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's talk with our spotlight guest Tom. He'll share with us how he honors his parents. Let's hear from him now. Generally, I do respect my parents, um, even though like I, I have a lot of arguments with them. They uh, get on my nerves a lot, but uh, I do what they tell me most of the time. When I was younger, I think it was easier for me to listen to them. Now, obviously, I'm older, so it's, it's going to be like an argument here or there. I do get annoyed when they tell me what to do because I'm a lot like my dad, Mr. Know-it-all, I guess you could say. At times my parents do embarrass me because uh, whether they dress too nice or nicer than I am or they think this way about something or when my friends come over they say a certain thing or want to bring out the baby pictures but that's normal for parents. I'm older so like they, they're always on my case about like what I'm going to be doing or like what I'm going to be doing in the future and how I should do it. We try to settle on it, but not all the time it's not going to be uh, eye to eye. I always try to help my dad when he's in the yard, you know, it's not, the, it's not my favorite thing to do, but I try to help him out and same thing with my mom. Whenever she needs help in the kitchen or picking up my siblings from school or whatever, I try to do the best I can. You know, it really resonates with me what he said about sometimes it's just, you know, you necessarily don't want to go help your dad mow the lawn or cut down the tree that just won't, mm -hmm. doesn't want to come down, but you just do it out of respect for them. And in the yeah. end, it, it, it's a good feeling anyway. Like at first you're like, oh, I'm not going to do this. Right. And then you sit on the couch for five seconds. You're like, all right, I got to go help my mom. <laughs> the like, guilt eating away. At me. <laughs> I know. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say about this topic. All right. Sounds good. They are Dan, Nick, Chris, Kayla. Christina, Laura, and Mary. 
So uh, how do you guys honor and respect your parents? Like I kind of have a hard time like uh, respecting them because when you're younger, you look up to your parents and like, they tower over you yeah. and <laughs> they kind of invoke fear in you. But now like I'm taller than my mom and I'm almost as tall as my dad. So like they'll tell me to do something and th that whole like, you're taller than me, I should go do what you say. It doesn't really resonate in me anymore. So I try to do what they say, but it doesn't always work out. Yeah, like that's how I feel. Like when you're little, they're like, don't make me count to three. And then they get to one and you're like, okay, okay. And you like run upstairs and brush your teeth. <laughs> but like now that I'm like 16, I'm like, when they count to three, nothing's really going to happen. And we're like teenagers, like, you know, I'm going to do what I want. You can count to three. So I feel like the older we get, it's like harder because we're like on their eye level. Like you said, we're like as tall as them and stuff. I mean, that's what I struggle with. Now that I'm older, I recognize that like it's a duty for me in my house to like help out and help my mom do the dishes or whatever because like I can't really leave it up to her like when I was a little kid I didn't have the responsibility to take care of that but now that I'm older I'm more responsible and realize I'm gonna help her out. I'm the oldest child so I always have to be on top of stuff and help my mom in the house and you know it's really hard to, to respect her because you know she's always looking for me to do you know what my siblings don't do so you know, she might yell at me before she yells at my little sister, yeah. per se. So it really is hard, but in the end, I have to respect her because she's my mother. So It's hard for me as well because I like to take shortcuts in doing it. Like, my parents will be like, Chris, <laughs> go take out the trash. I'll be like, all right. They'll leave the room. Hey, to my little sister, go take out the trash. <laughs> and, and it could be big things like for studying. I'll be like, study. And I'll take out my book and put another book on top of it that I want to read. <laughs> And it could be as little as, go brush your hair. I'll brush my hair the next, and then the next day, I'll just go get my hair cut really short so I don't have to. <laughs> I know for the past 18 years, like, I've been kind of trying to live up to my parents' expectations as the model child. And I feel like that's kind of my way of honoring and respecting them as being what they want me to be and helping them out whenever they need things and just basically doing whatever they want to do. But now, as I'm getting older and I want to be more independent and kind of be on my own, it's getting harder to do that because they don't, they're still trying to cling to me and I'm trying to distance myself a little bit mm -hmm. and I'm still like helping them out and making sacrifices for them and honoring and respecting them. But at the same time, I'm trying to be more myself and do what I want to do. Yeah, I know what you mean. I try to do as my parents tell me to do, but it's kind of difficult at times because they have these really strange rules I, I, <laughs> I don't believe other people have to deal with. <laughs> And they get these ideas from the TV or if they read an article online. And I'm just like, oh, okay, mom, I, I'll do what you say. And then normally she forgets about the rule or just doesn't make me follow it the next month. So I just deal with it to avoid fighting. Um, I respect and honor my mom because she cooks for me. And I really, really, really love food. And I know at times she doesn't feel like, you know, getting up and to cook. And she actually makes my plate first. I just feel so special because I know my mom loves me. Well, in Exodus chapter 20, the fourth commandment says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. It's a direction and a promise. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we see that this commandment requires us to show honor, affection, and gratitude for our parents. When God created people, he looked at them in the Garden of Eden and said they were good. He created every individual in his image and likeness with dignity and worth. So it only makes sense that God says we need to show respect to the people he puts in our lives. Especially those who have been there since the beginning, our parents. Well, let's go back to our spotlight guest, Tom, where he shares how he and his parents didn't always see eye to eye on things. And how a time when he was disrespectful to his mother led him to a major change of attitude. I know they want the best for me and they've gone through college already, high school, they've gone through jobs and everything so they're trying to give me their experience that they have to me so I would understand what it's like. I believe there was a time, I forget if it was freshman year or sophomore year, uh, I yelled at my mom for something, I don't remember what it was, we, we were in a big argument and she was very upset about that and she wanted me like to go talk to somebody about it. I ended up talking to somebody about it and you know, ended up apologizing to her later and I understood like why she was upset because you know, I'm her son and she only wants the best for me. So, you know, there's always going to be the little fights here and there in the long run. Apologizing, yeah, it's hard, but 
you know, forgiving, uh, especially your parents. Forgiving your parents is, is very important because, again, they were always th they're always going to be there for you and they only want the best. Me and my parents obviously won't see eye to eye, so there will always be times where we'll fight and, and uh, not want to talk to each other for a while, but I love my parents, so they're, and they're always going to mean a lot to me and that I'll be able to take care of them when they get older, like they took care of me when I was younger. I've never really thought of it like my parents have already gone through high school and yeah. they've already gone through college, they've already, you know, basically grown up and it's just like, you know, I guess that's kind of where most of our fights come from because I feel like they're out of touch with me and then they mm -hmm. feel like they know everything about me so it's always usually somewhere in the middle is, you know, the best yeah. way to be. I argue with my mom a lot and like sometimes I'll talk to my dad and he goes, Mary, you know, you never apologize to your mom when you get into a fight, like I just blow it over and it's true, I never apologize and I think Tom said that it's really important to apologize once you get into a fight and like I guess when I go home and I'll apologize to my mom for like something that I did like two weeks ago or something. I always apologize within 30 seconds of like the argument so my parents don't really take our arguments seriously I don't think a lot but um you know like I do fight with my parents like I think everyone fights with their parents. I don't really fight but just like my mom and I always get into these like little arguments because we're so much alike and we're both like really <laughs> stubborn so it's like I'm right and she's like no I'm right we just keep going back and forth and like sometimes We'll just throw our hands up and we'll start laughing because we realize she's just like you are so much like me and this argument's going nowhere and we'll just sit down and like try to make a compromise or just try to forget about it. We don't argue often in my family but when I argue it's mostly with my stepdad because we always find the littlest things to argue about. Like I'll come home and he'll be like, you didn't put napkins in the napkin holder. I'll be like, <laughs> I, hate, I, hate. I feel like everyone argues with their parents because everyone's parents want what's best for them and all everyone like all kids our age just kind of want to have fun and be kids and parents know like what they've been through it before so they know what's good for you to do and what's bad for yeah. you to do but as kids we can't really see the whole picture yet and so our parents are trying to show us what we should be and we always don't always agree with it yeah I think it's important to understand that your parents are older and wiser and like they do know like they're trying to lead you right I think it would be good to just like sit down and listen to them because they're you have so much more experience. I actually don't argue with my mom. I guess not as often as you guys, no <laughs> offense, because we don't really have time to argue because we're, <laughs> we're in so many different things. It's like if we argue, it's like an argument and everybody's just blowing up at each other and then we just learn to love each other and it's over, you know? It's, <laughs> we, don't, we don't argue for a long time. Well, our parents are very special people in our lives and deserve our respect and our special relationship to them. One way to respect them is how we speak to them and how we speak about them. There are all sorts of nicknames and abbreviations for them like rents or parental units, for instance. <laughs> Sometimes we use those words with a sense of affection, but often we use them with a sense of annoyance and exasperation because we don't like what they're asking of us. Our parents are the people who brought us into the world who have hopes and dreams for us who have made sacrifices of time, money, and self for us. Do you consider what your parents have done for you? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. I do consider quite often what my parents have done for me. Yeah, I consider it all the time. I'm grateful for it, too. I do consider like what my parents do, like the work and the time that they put in, yeah. Not lately. I'm waiting later for that. They always do so much for me, and I have to think of what they do for me and stuff. They make decisions for me that are right. Just paying for college, like, it means so much to me because she didn't have to do it, and she goes out of her way to help me. Dad put away a lot of money for me to go to school, and uh, you know, I hope to one day repay him if I can because it's a big sacrifice that he's made for me. Do you think you need someone to protect and guide you like parents? I think so, especially as a teenager. Like, you don't really know what there is to do. You don't know who you are. You need someone just to guide you on the right path so you don't make any mistakes. My friends do that too, but my parents are a big part of that. Especially at this age, I think my parents, like, play a mo major role in my life and I couldn't live, I guess, without them. I need somebody to protect me because I don't really make good decisions most of the time. You need to have a caregiver, you know, in your life. I think now at the point in my life I'm a little better off by myself, but I still want them there by the side sometimes. What have you learned from them that might help you to be a good parent? Um, responsibility. They have taught me to be responsible. That you have to be caring and loving. I've learned just to be patient and kind and to do everything you possibly can for your child. Everything they do will influence me and how I, when I'm older. To be level-headed and, uh, you know, to keep it cool and be loving and always be there. 
As teenagers, we have a natural tendency to want to be on our own and be more independent. Which can often cause friction when our parents have other expectations for us. While this tension is normal, it doesn't mean that it's suddenly okay to dismiss your parents' advice or intentions, to be rude or angry, or to treat them in a disrespectful way. Our generation isn't so far removed from theirs that we share nothing in common. So, would it make a difference in your relationship to them if you saw them through the eyes of gratitude? How might this impact the way you respect them or the affection that you have for them? Next, we ask the teens on the street when's the last time they thanked their parents for life and all they've done for them. Let's hear what they had to say. Maybe like a couple weeks ago? A few years ago, I'd say. I don't really thank them that much for life. I never really think about that. I guess not for life and everything, but I mean, I always say thank you and stuff, but I never really initially said that. It's not too often that I go up to my parents and I'm like, thank you for giving me life, but um, in some sense, I, I do thank them for the little things and occasionally the, in the broader picture of giving me life. I cannot remember the last time I, I thanked my parents for giving me life. I thank my parents often enough, I think. I thank my parents all the time because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here. And if it weren't for like everybody else's parents, they wouldn't be here either. I actually thank my mom today because she gave me most of the money to come here. And I thank her for just helping me with, that, with everything when I need her. I haven't, but I should. I should probably do that as soon as I get home. Do I believe my parents are a gift from God? Absolutely. And, and vice versa, I think. I do believe my parents are a gift from God. They're great. I believe my parents are because they treat me good and like I really love them. Yeah, I believe my parents are a gift from God because without them then I would probably be living on the street. They have to be a gift from God. Sure, I, I think so. And that means I'm a gift from God too. You know, kind of. I think they're from God because they're amazing parents. They do everything they can possibly for me. So definitely a gift. So how about you guys? How are your parents a gift from God? And what are some things that you've learned from them that might make you a good parent? Well, I know I've learned to be really like ambitious and like reach for my goals from like my mom. She like always tells me like reach for your dreams and everything. And as far as my mom being a gift from God, you know, she's there for me. You know, we might not always see eye to eye, but she's always there for me. Like I might be having a bad day and she might find a funny joke to say, but you know, she's there, you know, she's like, my mom. I learned from my parents that like to have like good parents you have to support each other. If you like you have a spouse you have to support them so that the child doesn't go to one person and like they give them one answer and then they go to the other parent and they give them a different yeah. answer. So you have to you have to work as a team so that to be a good parent. What I've learned from like my mom is that um, faith is something really really important to have especially with the family. Like it's not like my mom drags us to church, but she's got us more into our faith that all of us really, really want to go to church. It's something that like matters to all of us. And we say the family rosary every night, and just like having faith in your family and keeping God in the center of your family relationship, is, like I realize it's so important, and it makes things like so much different. Like I think of what it would be without God, and I realize like I'm really happy that my parents brought me up with that and have taught me like all about my religion. I always like to think of the saying, uh, the family that prays together stays together. Yeah. And like <laughs> I, I just started getting my uh, family to start doing the family rosary every night and it's just been really nice. But um, I truly regard my mom as a gift from God because it, like, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have had my big conversion from like living a sinful lifestyle to yeah. aiming for holiness now. Um, but I've definitely learned like responsibility from them and just uh, how to be a gentleman, really. I've also learned responsibility um, because they teach me how to be responsible by not letting me take the shortcuts, letting me <laughs> do the things that I need to do because I didn't know it when I was taking the shortcuts, but now I know that they're teaching me and they want me to do those certain things for a reason rather than my little sister. <laughs> I definitely consider my parents a gift from God because I was adopted when I was a baby and so you know I happen to be placed with my family and they have been the most spectacular family that I could have asked for. They've supported me in everything and my parents have been so wonderful to me that like looking at them that's my role model for when I become a parent and so God's gift to me was my parents and I want to pass that on to my own children. Even though they're separated right now um, and my dad is recently married and they had a child. You know, it's not easy to adapt to the fact that I have a stepmom now and that I have to share my father with other individuals. <laughs> but um, 
if it wasn't for my father and my mother, you know, even though they have disagreements, I wouldn't look the way I look and I wouldn't have my teeth, my eyes, my nose, my cute little nose, you know. <laughs> so I definitely think that my parents are a gift from God and that I'm a gift from God. I think my parents are definitely a gift from God because of like all the things they've taught me. And one of the most important things they've taught me is sacrifice because I've seen all the sacrifices they made for me during my lifetime, and I've seen the sacrifices they made in their lives before I even came, and I appreciate that they sacrificed for not only me, but other people, because now I know what it means to truly sacrifice for someone else. Well, next, let's go back to our Spotlight guest, Tom, where he discusses how his parents have always been there for him. And how they guided him through times of struggle while in high school. Guidance is always, um a key thing of mine like I always want to have somebody there to like be able to help me uh, with struggles or be able to be there to listen to like any problems I have or questions. I was really excited about high school and it, it turned out um, through my freshman year that it really wasn't the place for me. I really didn't feel like I fit in. Like I really didn't like going there every day. When I had uh, problems with bullying I told my parents but it was pretty much late in the year, so I only had about a couple of weeks left in school. They wanted me to go talk to somebody about it, so I talked to a counselor about it, I talked to a priest about it. It ended up helping me in the end a lot, so, and I definitely learned from that. I'm glad that they were there and they were able to, you know, help me out, like understand what I went through. So at first I wasn't really happy about having to go talk to a therapist about it, and they felt that that was like the best thing and they talked to my doctor about it. I've grown to understand like the, the things they do for us and, and why. They're always there for me. I remember when I didn't make the basketball team in high school so they were they, they knew that I was pretty upset about that, but they still wanted me to like, try something new and they still told me to try different things. You'll, you'll learn a lot from the different people you meet and so it, it really helps you in the long run. Jesus doesn't ask us to do things he wasn't willing to do himself. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, Jesus is in the city with his parents, and after they leave to go home, they realize he isn't with them. You can imagine that they were really upset, but when they found him in the temple, Jesus willingly left to go back to Nazareth and was obedient to them. Jesus did what his parents asked of him. If God is willing to do this, shouldn't we be too? Next, we ask the teens on the street, what does faith teach you about honoring and respecting your parents? Let's hear from them now. Faith is a lot. It, I mean, it teaches you just to be yourself, really. You have to love each other as you love yourselves. It teaches me to have patience, especially when I get like frustrated with what my mom or dad said. But it teaches me to be kind and to be to understand like they're people too. That they're really important and that I should always respect them and like, it, obviously it's a commandment, so I must live by it. Um, well, it's one of the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother. I try my best to. I think my faith has mostly everything to do with what I've learned about respect for my parents. Just respect, mostly. Like, friends will come and go, but your family will always be there for you. It's really cool how they all mention like, the teachings of our faith and how that helps them honor and respect their parents. But the other thing that faith does for me is it's really my family is very faithful together. You know, we make a big deal out of going to church every week, and then we go out for breakfast afterwards. And so faith has kind of helped put me in a family situation, and it, give us, it gives us a really strong bond. And that helps me, you know, honor my parents and my siblings as well. I try to act like, or have my family model that, uh, model the holy family. And I respect my parents and whatever they ask me to do, and just be Jesus-like in my family. Mm -hmm. Remember, your parents said yes when God asked them to accept new life into their life. They were obedient to what he wanted for them. When they said to God, sure, I'll give birth to or adopt this little child. <laughs> and I will love them even when they don't take out the trash, <laughs> when they say mean things to me, even when I have to stay up all night with them when they're sick. Lastly, our spotlight guest Tom shares how his faith helps him in his relationship with his parents. And how he considers them a gift from God. I try to live by my faith every day and try to improve on it every day. Well, God tells us to honor our father and mother. At times, it's difficult. Look at it this way. They've given you life. They take care of you and help you develop as you grow up. They give you the best they can. When I go to church with my family, it's and I see other families uh, go to church, it 
inspires me to be more respectful to my parents and to understand where they're coming from uh, in difficult times. I've learned from them that patience is a virtue. It will help you a lot in a lot of things you do when you're dealing with uh, people you don't know too much or just dealing with your family in general. Prayer has definitely helped me, and especially this year. I felt last year I was farther away from God than I am now, so definitely praying and to God really helped me to respect them more, you know, be patient, uh, understanding, especially with my entire family. So to always have prayer in your life, it, it would always uh, help. Like I always said, you have to be patient and understanding because a lot of times we choose not to see the other side that our parent is coming from. Yeah, like Tom said, I think prayer is really important. You know, pray for patience not only with yourself but with your parents. Someday you might be a parent yourself. Even though you probably think you'll do everything differently, be kind to your parents. It's not easy making decisions for the people you love. It's hard to say no when you know it will disappoint someone you love. Try asking your parents what they like most about being a parent and what's the hardest part for them. You may find new respect and understanding for these people you're called to honor. So does your relationship with God help you to honor and respect your parents? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with this final thought from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Children, obey your parents from the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. That it may go well with you. And that you may have a long life on earth. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.